मंगल भगवान वीरो मंगल गौतम प्रभु Jai Jinendra and welcome to Mangalam. Today we have an exciting program for you. We will have Professor Francion speaking about the importance of meditation. After that we will have a vegan recipe for you to cook and then after that we will have a melodious bhajan by Virendra Bhai Kothari. Come and listen to Professor Gary Francion who calls himself an American Jain. He is going to talk to us about the importance of meditation and different ways of Jain meditation can be done. So please enjoy the lecture. I am sure you will start meditating very next time. Jai Janendra, in this third lecture I am going to talk about the importance of meditation. Meditation is extremely important in Jainism. Meditation is one of the ways in, uh, meditation actually performs many roles or, or uh, uh, it provides many benefits uh, for those of us who follow Jain Dharma. One of the things that meditation does is it helps us to develop uh, a, a attitude or or um, uh, an attitude of, of equanimity. It helps us to become, uh, you know, to, to, to develop equanimity. When we meditate, we are are supposed to uh, be vitraga. We are supposed, at least for that period of time that we are meditating, we are supposed to not have attachments and aversions. We're not supposed to be thinking about the past, worrying about the future. None of that. So it requires, so, so meditation requires that we focus, we focus on the present, which most of us don't do. I mean, I mean, none of, virtually none of us, you know, you know, those of us, particularly those of us who are householders, who are not, who are not ascetics, who do not have, you know, the ascetic lifestyle, those of us who, who are, exist in the world, who are, I'm a, I'm a, a professor, uh, I, I, you know, I mean, I have to, I interact with people, I teach classes, those of us who are doctors, lawyers, engineers, we have to interact, we interact with the world and as a result we're always thinking about the past, we're always worrying about the future. And, and in a sense that's very, very inconsistent with how we ought to be uh, 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 focused in terms of just focused on the present. And so what one of the first things that meditation does or one of the many benefits that it provides is that it helps us to develop equanimity, at least for the period of time that we're meditating and then hopefully the more we meditate the better we get at meditation. We take that 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 feeling of equanimity, and we carry it forward, so that so that we're we're in a state of equanimity uh, all of the time, not just when we're meditating. And 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 equanimity is very important because when we act without equanimity, when we are in a state in which we when we're not in e- in a state of equanimity, we are in some state of of himsa. We are we are we are in some state of himsa when we're not in a state of equanimity. So. Meditation is important because it helps us to develop a state of to, to develop the attitude of equanimity. It helps us to become vitraga, at least for the period of time that we are that we are meditating, and then we carry that forward into our our our, our lives, so that we're doing this all the time, more and more. So it's not just a half an hour or forty eight minutes or however long that we're meditating, but it's you know it's now you know hours and hours and hours, and so. Uh, so that's one of the things it does. One of the other things that uh, a meditation does is it helps us to uh, deal with inauspicious karma that we have that we have attracted to us uh, that will eventually rise. It helps us to sort of get rid of 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 of, of the inauspicious karma, and it helps us to stop from binding new karmas. And and um, and most importantly, and, and this is really sort of an aspect of all of you know. I, I, I mean, all of these benefits are in certain ways, uh, I'm describing benefits, they're all really the same benefit described in different ways. Ultimately what meditation gets us to do is to see ourselves, to use our souls to see our souls. 
You know, it's this, it's this, the, one, of the, one of the most interesting aspects of Jainism is this notion that um, the soul is both the perceiver and the object of perception. We, our, our souls, are perceiving our souls. And, and that is, and that's a, that's a um, uh, for want of a better word, a mystical state of, to be in. And it's something that requires a lot of practice and something re- requires that we take, it, we, we take this, this very seriously. For many years, I mean, meditation, as I say, is very, very important in Jainism. And if you look at the, you know, if you look at the, the, the you know, the, the original canons or you look at the medieval works of, uh, of the, the, the learned writers, you see there's a big emphasis on meditation. Uh, it, is, it is my, my um, understanding that, unfortunately, uh, meditation sort of dropped out of Jainism uh, and sort of lost its its the, you know its its central focus, but it's been it's it, but now there is a movement to bring meditation back and to put focus on meditation, um, and that's coming from uh, several different sources. Uh, it comes from, for example, the Terapanti subsect of the Shvatamra, uh, the Terapanti from from Rajasthan. Um, the the um, one of the one of the, the the great things that they've done is to develop this system called preksha meditation. Preksha means to perceive a meditation of perception, and it was developed by Guru Dev Tulsi, and it was further developed by Acharya Mahapragya, um, and and um, and 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 uh, uh, Guru Dev Tulsi, he created. Uh, you know, you have uh, 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 sadhus and sadhvis, but 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 um, he created Guru Dev Tulsi created uh, a, a different group of, uh, of of ascetics called samans and samanis, and he allows them uh, samans and samanis are allowed to travel, uh, although there are no more samans. I don't I don't believe uh, they they have samans anymore. It's basically samanis, women, who. Um, who tra- who are allowed to travel and 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 um, and so they they go to different countries and they teach meditation. So you have the Terapanti uh, Preksha meditation, which is uh, a very very important form of meditation, which is now being taught not only in India but in the United Kingdom and in the United States. I learned Preksha meditation from from uh, Samaniji Mudit and Samaniji Shukla uh, at the Jain Bishwa Bharati Center at, in Edison, New Jersey. It was a wonderful experience. Those of you who, who 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 live on the East Coast, anywhere in the in the New York, New Jersey, uh, Connecticut area, should be taking advantage of the wonderful wonderful course that the Jain Bishwa Bharati Center uh, offers. Uh, it's a marvelous course. There are other forms of medita- meditation. Uh, Guru Dev Chitrabanu um, at, at the Jain Meditation Center in New York, he, he, he teaches Jain meditation. Um, and uh, down at Sidachalam uh, in Blairstown, New Jersey, you have uh, Aham meditation, which was uh, developed by a Stanakwasi uh, 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 ascetic who came to the United States, a man named uh, Sushil Kumar. Uh, he is uh, now uh, no longer in this in this world, um, but um, but he developed something called Arham meditation. So there are different sorts of Jain meditation. There's not just one. They're they're they're, they're similar. I mean, they're similar sorts of meditation. Um, and I'm not I'm not uh, an, an expert in the fine details, but um, there there are certain are, are, certainly are similarities. But meditation is really very important, and it's I, I, I meditation is wonderful. It is a wonderful experience. Because um, you, you, you. Uh, for example, the, the form of meditation that I practice most often is Preksha meditation, which I learned, as I said, from uh, from the Samnijis at the Jain Bishop Bharati Center in Edison, and and uh, it involves. Um, a number of different stages. For example, um, one uh, does a certain sort of, uh, uh, intro, you know, a preparatory meditation on on arham. Uh, you know, one recites arham. One assumes a certain posture. One engages in what we call kayotsarg, uh, You know, the, which which is basically uh, uh, relaxation with complete awareness, where the goal of kayotsarg is to perceive the body and the spirit as separate entities. To sort of see the body, give up the body, and sort of 
focus on the soul. And then one, one does a series of exercises. One perceives, you know, one uses one's, one's, uh, one's uh, soul to perceive the breathing, one's breathing. One's body, you know, the various, you know, one, you, you meditate on, the, on various parts of your body and you feel the electrical currents that, that, that you know, when you, really, when you really concentrate your mind, there's all sorts of things going on in your body. Uh, there's also a perception of your psychic centers. Uh, you know, uh, we talk about uh, chakras, um, and and uh, Preksha meditation talks about kendras. Uh, these are these are uh, uh, related concepts. There are more kendras than there are chakras, but these are all related uh, concepts. And so one focuses on 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 uh, Shakti kendra or or you know uh, uh, Tejas kendra, and uh, and then one also perceives psychic colors. One perceives one one meditates on colors at various at at various psychic centers. Um, and then after preksha meditation, one engages in anupreksha, after preksha. After one does perception, one contemplates on ideas. So you meditate on the idea of transitoriness. For example, that, you know, uh, the where you're sitting right now, you're not going to be sitting there in a couple hours. And whatever problems you have, you're not going to have those problems forever. Uh, you're not going to be, you know, you're not, you're not going to be alive forever. That everything is transitory. Nothing is permanent. That's one, one sort of thing that you focus on. Another idea you focus on is fearlessness. We all go through life plagued with anxieties, all of us, every single one of us, we all spend so much time involved in, in obsessing about, we worry about what's going to happen, what could happen, we worry about are we going to have enough money, are our kids going to get into this school or that school, what about, you know, we all worry about things. And one of the, one of the great meditations of Anupreksha is the meditation of fearlessness, where you meditate, you meditate on, on um, a psychic center, you, med- you use color, and you use uh, meditation on the psychic center, Center, and you combine that with with bhavna of 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 the contemplation of fearlessness, the fact that that you don't want to be, that you aren't an anxious person, that it's not your nature to be anxious, it's your nature to be courageous and to be unafraid, and that you can never be spiritual as long as you are afraid. You'll never have a spiritual life as long as you're frightened. That's clear. That's absolutely clear. The Jain sages have been saying that forever, and you know what, like many of the, many of the points of Jainism, simple, profound. And the Jain sages have been telling us forever, you want to be a spiritual person? Well, you can't be a spiritual person and be a frightened person. And that's absolutely right. You have to give up fear. You have to give up anxiety. So one of the portions of preksha meditation and anupreksha is you contemplate fearlessness. So, so preksha meditation involves a meditation of perception, perception of breath, perception of body, perception of psychic centers, perception of psychic colors, the practice of kayotsarg, giving up the body, the, the, the perception of the soul and the body is separate, but it also involves contemplation of ideas. And again, there are these other forms of, of, of meditation, the form of meditation that Gurudev Chitrabhanu teaches, or that is taught at Siddhachalam, uh, that, that the Arham meditation. These all, to a greater or lesser degree, are they're similar in that they all focus, some aspect of them is perception, some aspect of them is contemplation. So some of the time we are perceiving without thinking, or ideally without thinking, and some of the time we're, we're engaged in contemplation. But I cannot recommend meditation highly enough to you. Meditation is wonderful. Meditation helps us achieve equanimity. It helps us to not react. It helps us to learn to act and not react. It helps us to get rid of those aspects of our personality that are inauspicious, and it helps us to develop a more auspicious personality. Meditation is wonderful. It's an important part of Jainism. Historically, it has been. Recently, you know, in the, in the 19th and 20th century, it sort of fell away uh, for a lot of Jains. Now it's coming back. Embrace it. It's very, very important. Uh, and, and there are wonderful ways and wonderful Jain methods of meditation, and I recommend them to you. And as I mentioned, if you live anywhere near the Jain Bishwa Bharati Center, they have centers in Edison, New Jersey, in Houston, Texas, and in uh, Florida, uh, as well as in England. Uh, uh, Guru 
Sukhdev Chitrabanu, he is in New York City, uh, and Sushil Kumar's uh, Sedachalam is down in Blairstown, New Jersey. But again, they have they have people all over who can teach you these these forms of meditation. So contact these places, get information, learn meditation. Araham, thank you. Now it's time for a short break, but please don't go away anywhere because we'll be right back with a recipe for rosemary biscuits. For your tax-free donations, suggestions, and comments, please visit mangalamshow.com. Welcome back to Mangalam. Now, Dhawal Mehta, our host for Jain Cooking, will take you to learn the vegan recipe of rosemary biscuits by Yashoda Jordan. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Mangalam. My name is Dhawal Mehta, and we're here again with Yashoda Jordan, who's going to show us more vegan Jain recipes. Um, today, we're actually making something called rosemary cheese biscuit. Is that right? Biscuit? Right. What is the difference between a biscuit or a biscuit? Well, uh, this biscuit can be used like you would use uh, chapati or puri, so it's like it, it's an accompaniment to a main meal. And it's actually very uh, quintessential for, to American cooking, and everybody uh, uses this. So this is how you make it. It's very easy. You need some flour. Now, one cup and a half flour, one teaspoon of salt. We're using a little bit more of salt because the vegan cheese usually is saltless and it's, it's for people who, uh, who have uh, problems with this. It's okay, so this is the uh, vegan soy cheese. When we need rosemary, basil, sage and just you know I'd like to work my with my hands you just go and mix it together and then add some about a quarter cup or half a cup of soy milk and Sometimes it's good if uh, you can grind actually the uh, soy cheese because sometimes it's, uh, it only melts when it's at high heat. So after you mix everything, I think it's a good test if you just smell it a little bit. If the rosemary is overpowering, that's a good sign. So then we will spoon everything in, in a muffin pan and then bake it at a preheated oven at 375 degrees for 10 minutes. So watch out, it's not going to uh, burn. And the finished product looks like this. There. So we just made rosemary cheese biscuits and this is how you can make one at home. Mmm, really soft, really good. Now we'll take a short break, but we'll come right back with a melodious bhajan for you. For your tax-free donations, suggestions, and comments, please visit mangalamshow.com. Welcome back to Mangalam. Now we will listen to a melodious bhajan by Virendra Bhai Kothari. Let's go. 
I hope you enjoyed today's program. We would like to know your opinion about the program. So please write to us at mangalamshow at gmail.com. Please visit our website for more information about the program at www.mangalamshow.com. Until next time, Jai Jinendra.